in the heart of Kent. Hi, I'm Peggy, this is Cheeky. There's a vet's practice like no other. He's very weak. Whatever the creature, there's someone here to treat it. Oh. This cat's in heart failure. Oh, okay. Sorry, sweets. For the very first time, the surgery and its staff have been rigged with cameras. I don't hear heart. Right, it's adrenaline to make her heart go. I wasn't expecting it to be this massive. This is unbelievable. To give us a unique view into this extraordinary world. <laughs> a dedicated team. That looks like it's about to fall off. Saving lives. Yay! Well done. Making difficult decisions. We've got to make sure that we don't get to a stage where he's suffering. And treating animals that others won't. Not every day we see a goat in here. <laughs> in the clinic today, a rhino iguana needs life-saving surgery for a monster growth. One as big as this. A tortoise faces losing a leg after hibernation. So that's a really, really severe injury. I don't know whether it's going to heal, though, because I'm worried that that bone is too far gone. And a rescue guinea pig needs extreme dental work. So I'm going to have to try and take the teeth almost back to the gun line. God, your teeth are awful. They are absolutely shocking. Expect the unexpected. Good job, everybody. Inside the vets. Just when you think you've seen everything, something weird will come through the door at Montgomery's, mm. without a doubt. We deal with such weird and wonderful animals, from a great big snake to a tiny little mouse. I love getting the unusual things. It's good fun to have something that I've, I've not seen before or not worked with before, and um, we have to investigate a little bit. I enjoy that part of the job. You don't know what's going to walk through the door as the next appointment, but they all are there at the end of the day. They need help, and that's what we're there to do, and we deal with them. And Clive's first patient scores high on the weird and wonderful scale. Keith and Laura's unusual pet is positively prehistoric, a metre-long rhinoceros iguana. Oh, Good morning. Good morning. We've got a rhino iguana named Dio. Dee's getting on for just over five years old now. She is a character. She turns around and uh, she'll have a romp around the room when we let her out. She'll jump up onto the sofa, sits on my head. Dio is just one of three rhino iguanas that Keith owns, along with another 19 reptiles. We let them out a lot, so uh, they'll sit there on our laps watching TV, believe it or not. But recently, Dio's not been showing much interest in anything, never mind the telly. How's she doing? She's not herself, obviously, but yeah. she's, she's coping quite well at the moment. Great. She seems strong enough, so... She's always going to be good. Hello. Hello. You are a big girl, aren't you, Heath? Very... Could you tell Lucy that Dio's here? Thank you. Clive saw Dio yesterday and diagnosed a monster problem in her bladder. She's actually got an impaction that's the size of my fist of urate. Urate is basically a substance that's let go with their toilet and basically that uh, it can crystallise and what it's done is crystallise, built up and by doing that it's caused the impaction. But for one that size, it's pretty rare. Hi. Hi. Come on through. Sorry, I've lost my voice today. Right. OK, so I just wanted to go through everything face to face quickly yeah, for yeah. today. Did you see the x-rays? Yeah, we saw the x-rays. OK. I so it looks like a giant egg. Yeah. yeah. yeah it's, it's massive. It's 10 centimetres by 7 centimetres. Mm. You know, it's, mm. it's really big. The surgery in itself is very straightforward. Right. Um, it's, it's not. Fancy surgery, yeah. but it's still well, a major operation. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, with the lever, then we're not going to have that anymore. Absolutely not, no. 
quite concerned. It's really out of uh, sync to what she's normally like. And we know with these reptiles that within four hours, you can actually lose them. They just go downhill so quick. We've had her since she was so big, when she ripped off the pet shop uh, bloke's thumb. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. There's blood everywhere. She, like, just ripped it off. But she's actually never bitten us. She's very tame, but you can upset her, and uh, she obviously will take your fingers off quite happily. Before they can sedate Dio, Clive needs to weigh her to work out the dosage. She's not an easy customer. You see how sharp their scales are? Just a little cut on my thumb, thumb there. So yeah, we don't want to mess with her. Walker Gale has rushed in with six-year-old Labrador Lola for an emergency appointment. Lola, do you want to come straight through? Hey, Lola Squidge. She's seen by vet Lindsay. Have you been causing trouble on a walk? Yes. She flew off to swim and ran straight to gate post. Oh. Gale was walking Lola for her owners when the accident happened. You can't really sit very much until she actually sits down. She's okay. Cut. Right in the middle of her chest, it sort of pops open. She sits down, so I didn't see it until we got back to the car and she sat down in the Right, car. sit then. Oh. Oh. Okay, okay. All right, all right. Lola has a large open wound on her chest. If you're super good, Lola, we might be able to staple that. So stapling wounds, we do conscious. Um, but I think if we can avoid the anaesthetic stitch up, that's usually good. I'm not her owner, so I don't know what she behaves like, although she's very lovely. I'm um, sure. We have anything to say. I've left a message for her owner. We would ideally need to speak to him. So shall I try and give him a call okay, and see, yeah. see what he'd like to do? Yeah. And then uh, we can make a plan. Hello, this is a message from Lindsay Thomas here at Montgomery Vets. Um, we've just had Lola brought into us. She's had a little accident on a walk. It's nothing major, but I just needed to speak to you about um, what, what we do about it, if possible. So if you could give us a ring back, that would be great. All right, thank you very much. Bye-bye. Despite being unable to contact her owner, Lindsay still needs to treat Lola's wound to avoid infection. So I've, I've done a quick estimate. Uh, it's going to be about £105 to staple the wound. Do you think that would be okay? I don't think that would be a problem. Okay. Lindsay asks student nurse Tip to help her with the procedure. Hey. I'm just going to give her a couple of painkillers just uh, to help, because obviously it's not nice when you have a big old cut. This is not a treat, sweet bee. You're not going to get to eat it. Oh. But I love the enthusiasm. Okay. Right. Come on. There's a good girl, Lola. Good girl. Good girl. Well done. Right, I need your bum. Oh, oh, oh. Good girl. Oh, dear. OK. Well done. I know. I know. Ah, careful. You don't want a needle in your nose on top of everything else, do you? Silly puppy. But although Lola didn't flinch with the first two injections, she's now cottoned on to what Lindsay is up to. Good girl. Oh! Uh-uh, now. And she's not happy about it. Come okay. on. I think we're going to need a muzzle, I'm afraid. Oh, ah, 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 dear me. Could you grab a muzzle for us, Tip? Dear me, sweet pea. If you don't like injections, you're not going to like staples, I'm afraid. Lindsay needs to staple the wound back together. Student nurse Lauren comes to help them to hold Lola still. Good job. Good job. Do you want to leave her with us? She may be better behaved without a familiar face. Sometimes they use that as a bit of a crutch. All right, sweet pea. Come on. Okay. Okay. Right, and this might be a little bit stingy, sweets. Right, now she's not going to like this. I'm afraid. Have got her back in? Oh. Good girl. Oh, 
Okay, I know, I know, I'm so mean, I'm so mean, I'm so mean, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but doesn't that look better? Yeah. Well done, good girl. All right, I'll take it off, two seconds. There you go. There you go, baby girl. Oh, okay. Well Say thank you, Auntie Tips. Thank you, Auntie Lauren. Can you take the clippers back With her wound all stapled, Lola can be taken right. home to recover. I know, I know, wait. There we go. Oh, okay. Will you be careful? I have just stapled you back together. Eh? All right, lovely. All right, thank you. How have things been going? I've always wanted to be a vet. I can't think of anything else I would rather be doing. It's good to see you. Being a vet is a way of life. It's not just a job. I think if you speak to any vet, they probably feel the same way. Thursday, I've got to go to that pig to Pepper. Sorry, excuse me. Good afternoon, Montgomery Veterinary Clinic, Rosemary speaking. We were very aware as parents from an early age that Clive had a particular interest in animals. And he spent a lot of his holiday time at local vets helping up. And I suppose just being around them and so many of them growing up with them just sort of led to the, as you say, obvious conclusion. Right. When I grow up, I, I'd really like to be a vet. Do you want to put your fingers through there and you can stroke there? Then I can help mummy and daddy. So like one day I can be with daddy, one day I can be with mummy. You can go and get your book, OK? And say thank you. Uh -uh. Now, now, you're having a tantrum. They're very sensitive in their beaks, so we have to just go slowly. OK, I know, I know. Tommy, yeah. I could have to come Owner Dawn's brought in her nine-year-old tortoise, Tommy, who's woken up from his three-month winter hibernation with a shocking injury. Hi, so my name's Jo and this is Heather, who's a vet student. Hi, yeah, yeah. right. So, Tommy um, has got a problem with his leg. Yeah, he's just come out of hibernation on Tuesday morning in my back garden and part of his leg sort of see the bone and so I don't know if he's done it to himself or if... He probably won't have done it to himself. It's more, more likely to be something like a rat that's chewed it, which is quite yeah, common. It is. It's one of the risks with hibernating outside. We recommend that tortoises are hibernated in a controlled environment. Tommy had been hibernated outside. One of the risks associated with that is that other animals can access them. So this is actually his joint in there. Right. That's the dress. So that's, that's a really, really severe injury. Mm. His bone under here. Yeah, all in yeah. this white material. Um, it's amazing that he's walking on that. <laughs> we can try and treat it as an open wound. Yeah. I don't know whether it's going to heal though, because I'm worried that yeah. that bone is too far gone. They've got some really severe wounds to deal with and they are infected and they're also extremely painful. So once we've got the infection under control and Tommy into a better condition, it's very likely that we'll have to re remove the leg. So amputating a leg is quite a major surgery and we want him to be in a as strong a position as possible. So, um, yeah, I think trying to give him some pain relief, antibiotics, ideally check what bugs are in there and, and if it's not healing within, if starting to heal within sort of two to three weeks, we probably need to think we about We would look at, yeah. He's quite a character, this one. He, uh, he, yeah, he even comes up watches TV on your lap and he's pretty fast tortoise as well. So, um, yeah, it'd be a shame to have, if we have to lose his leg. Yes, but um, yeah. better than losing him. Hopefully. Of course, definitely, um, yeah. I've seen ones with wheels on the side, and I'm like, so is that an option? Not, what we actually found is that it's usually the, the most successful thing is actually just to glue um, a plastic ball. We often just use the little oh. balls out of deodorants, that sort yeah. of size, cut in half and glued there. Oh, so this, yeah. this side is just held up, yeah, and then you can use the other legs to move around. Yeah. It might be easiest if I just borrow him for a few minutes yeah, and get the nurses yeah, to help yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, so what yeah. we're going to do is just try and flush out all of the foreign yeah, material. Yeah, I wasn't, wasn't sure, I didn't want to touch it. Um, and we'll give him his first injection. So I'll give him an injection of painkiller now okay. as well. Try and okay. sort that out. Okay. okay. This is 
quite oh, dramatic. It's a tortoise. Oh. Well done. Surprise! Well done, exotics qualified nurse. <laughs> Managing Tommy's exposed wound yeah, won't be October. easy. Oh, wow. So it'll be all yeah, hands okay. on deck. That's quite a long time. Right, um, let me just get a swab. Ouchie. Poor thing. He's got a grumpy little face. <laughs> <laughs> As Joe and the nurses treat Tommy, Dawn bumps into fellow tortoise owner Ruth, whose own pet has also just come out of hibernation. Yeah, they're just cleaning up his wound and everything. Oh, what's he done to himself? He's just come out of hibernation. It looks like a rat's been a big, oh, big part no. of his leg. Oh, how awful. Right down to the bones. Oh, no. Ooh. I always Injections, painkillers. I've always hibernated mine in the fridge. Well, the rats can't get it. Well, mine used to hibernate inside, but the last couple of years he's been hibernating outside. On his own? Only, yeah, only a little enclosure. Oh, I kept yeah. an eye on him, but something's obviously had him at some stage. It's quite the tortoise day, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, well, they're all coming out now, aren't they? Um, I'm just going to just to... Um, He's not going to be a model tortoise after this, so <laughs> not with a gungy looking at yeah. Get me some wheels, he'd be all right. Yeah. It's pulling back for me there, so it is sore. Mm. And that is his bone. Take a swab and I've got rid of most of the debris. Deep inside as we can get. Look at this. Nice. I think we're probably going to have to amputate it. Yeah. But it looks nice. He's walking on that leg, though. Of course he is. He's tortoises. 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 They're like. They're very brave. If you could You're... bottle that stoicism. And he pops out of his Joe shell. needs to give Tommy some <laughs> anti inflammatory yeah, painkillers to aid times. the healing process. <laughs> Do you want to give it? Yes, so Lucy knows how to do it as well. She can do it for her. Red Heather what? does the honours. If you just pop it in there in the skin, put a draw back, and then inject. Perfect. Lovely. Very good. That was fun. Today's treatment is just the start of a long road to recovery for Tommy the tortoise. Do you want to come back, Sue? Yeah. Just have a quick chat. What I would think might be a good idea mm -hmm. is if you can give him a bath once a day. Um, and okay. I think that um, I think it is a bit painful. So even though he's oh, using oh, it, my. when we're actually cleaning it and touching it, he is trying to pull away quite a oh, lot. So I think it is quite him. sore. And we'll see how things are going. If we're finding in a few weeks this isn't healing across, which okay. is, then might happen, then we'll talk about amputation. Yeah, thanks so much. That's okay. Nice to see you now. See you later. All owner Dawn can hope for now is that the infection doesn't spread and that Tommy can enjoy the summer in the sun. Okay. 7.9. Can you just get the cage so I can put the, the zip back in there, if that's all right? In consult one, Clive and Joe are trying to get Dio the iguana back in her cage after weighing her. She's in for an operation to remove a huge growth, but she's incredibly powerful and, when feeling threatened, can be aggressive. Right, here we go. Six kilograms. It's big. Dio can definitely cause some serious damage. She definitely doesn't think very much of us, and uh, not only do, do we have to worry about her, her teeth, which can easily take the tip of your finger off, uh, but her tail as well can whip around and, and uh, really cause quite serious damage. Rhino iguanas are named after the horn on their snout and are a vulnerable species in the wild. It's not a species Clive meets or wrestles with that often. Clive has found a massive stone inside Dio's bladder. It urgently needs to be removed in surgery or she will die. For Dio's owner Keith, it's a worrying time. Very anxious but we have been through this with a couple of others that we've had. Unfortunately, we have lost a couple, and there's always that. It's a real high risk that we could lose her, so we're just hoping that uh, Clive can do his magic. Hello, you. Don't you worry. Don't you worry. Right. If I hold her like this, can someone jab? Clive needs to give Dio a mild sedative so they can prepare her for anaesthetic. But their six kilo patient is going to be hard to handle. Is that the easiest? Yep, that's good. Nice intramuscular. 
stingy. I'm sorry, mate. Okay. Dio was the first rhino iguana that I've anesthetized. Oh, come on, you. Where are you off to? When we're anesthetizing things that we don't have a lot of experience with, it definitely makes us all a bit more nervous. There's many books written on how to anesthetize cats and dogs, um, but there's no books written on how to anesthetize a rhino iguana. Right, let's cover him up and um, keep it in the dark so that the anesthetic can work. We need to be, be on our toes a bit and, and monitor things a little bit closely for, for small signs of change in things. Hey, Papa. Munchkin. Next in the clinic is Sarah, who's a very regular visitor. She rescues guinea pigs, rats and hamsters, and has over 20 rodent pets at home. Here's a munchkin. Yeah. You're the smelly munchkin. This little monkey is my one-year-old uh, special needs Lisa White piggy, Casper, whose teeth are causing trouble yet again. Again, so soon, Casper. Casper and Ollie both have a rare genetic syndrome that not only makes them albino, but means they're also blind and deaf. Casper, I wanted to get his teeth checked because he's dribbling. Lindsay checked his teeth and said, "Yep, he's got one at the back tipping forwards that shouldn't be." So it's only been two and a half weeks since his last one. Right, so he is back in today for another dental. Yep. Trouble. Should we just pop him on the scales quickly? Mm -hmm. 550. You've got weight, grams. Bubba. Yeah, he was 470. You put on 100 grams, Bubba. Very good. Guinea pigs' teeth are continually growing, but they should be worn down by the food they gnaw and chew. But guinea pigs with Casper's condition often have teeth that grow unusually quickly and at odd angles. You all right? Yeah, she's sweating. Oh. Just checking you're okay. Yeah. Worried, but yeah, I'm all yeah. right, thanks. So. You'll be a good boy. <laughs> you're a sweetie. All right. right. Okay. All right, see you Bye. later. Bye. It is worrying. It terrifies me. You know, every time they go in, I'm scared. You know, I worry so much about him because it is a lot for him to deal with at such a young age. In the operating theatre, the team are getting ready to file down Casper the guinea pig's teeth. But it feels a bit like Groundhog Day. It's only been like two weeks since his last dental, so I'm going to have to try and take the teeth almost back to the gum line. Right, are we ready to start with the fluorine? Good boy. What makes them It's a gene, it's a recessive gene that makes them albino, and it also often gives them other problems like dental disease or very, very small eyes quite commonly. We've got cotton bud for his mouth. He's really dribbly, Lindsay. Yeah, it's because his teeth are hurting him. God, your teeth are awful. They are absolutely shocking. The last time I did it, they were bridged, like completely touching okay. over his tongue. So I'm going to try and take them back further. Tip or Lauren, can I have some tweezers, please? Just a bit of grape that I think is going to start occluding his breathing. There we go. Smallest creature and how many people are working on him? It's better with the breathing. Right, OK, I'm going to start. That's a nasty, spiky bit. I mean, his teeth are just flaking away. So is this a result of inbreeding? It's just a genetic fault, but we seem to have fairly high levels of them. I maybe just think that because Sarah rescues them all. Yeah, possibly. She does her best for them, bless her heart. She does try, doesn't she? She does. She really tries. I've sculpted these teeth about as much as I can. OK, I think we're going to leave it at that. I've taken the teeth almost right down to the gum line. Every time Casper has this risky procedure, it costs around £70. If he needs another dental in another two weeks, I may have to talk to Sarah about whether it's fair to continue with him because I cannot take those teeth down any further. Five hours later, owner Sarah is back at the clinic to see her guinea pig. Hi Sarah, sorry for keeping you. Let's see our favourite little guinea pig. So he did very well today and woke up nice and quickly from his dental. 
Oh, sorry. Right, I have taken Casper's teeth right down to the gum line. Yeah. It has made him a bit sore, but I'm hoping to extend the time before we need to do this again. With the grape, he doesn't seem to be chewing it very well. This is the second time I've removed a massive piece from the back of his mouth. Yeah, he, he struggles with the skin of things. Yeah, so maybe we need to stop the grape and give him yeah. something else. Or peel the grapes. That would be great. Peel the grapes. <laughs> Individually peel grapes for him. That's what I want you to do. That's even more diverish. <laughs> Are you a diva? Bless him. All right, thank you. For Sarah, it's a relief to be taking him back home, but she knows more problems lie ahead. I kind of know when he starts dribbling that it's on the cards. But, you know, you take on the financial responsibility of an animal. You know, I can't change him from being poorly to being healthy. You know, you just have to deal with it. the six-year-old Labrador was rushed into the clinic 12 days ago by her dog walker after colliding with a gate post whilst on a walk. It left her with a nasty gash on her chest. This is Lola. Yeah. Oh, bless her, look. Today, she's been brought in by her owner, Richard. It was a bit worrying at first. I wasn't quite sure exactly how deep this gash had been. It did sound quite bad. Vet Lindsay is going to remove Lola's staples. Hello. Got Lola. Mr. Break, I presume. Yes. <laughs> Hi, Lola. And Lola. She says, ah, oh, not you again. Come on. How oh, no, she doesn't want to come in. She says, last time I was in this room, Dad, they stapled yes, me. Yes, exactly. Now she wants them out, she said. <laughs> right. Hello, darling. Now, how are the squirrels doing? Have you been chasing any more? She's been good, actually. Well, that's very good. Right, you're going to sit for me, darling. Sit. Good girl, stay. Right, and you That's stay it. there. Right. Oh, no, she's not liking this, is she? Oh, OK, sweets. Come on. If not, right. I might have to get nurses to help, and you know what happened last time. Good girl, it's all right. It's all right. It's all right. That's it. Good girl. That's it. Good girl. It's all right. All right, one more, one more. Lola, one more. One more, Lola. There we go. Right, well OK, done. I think that's it. Well done. Good girl. Oh, yes, I know. She's so clever. You dogs, you always like your bumps being scratched. Good All girl. Gone. There All you go. Those staples are gone. Yeah, and it's healed beautifully. Yeah, brilliant. So brilliant. avoid the squirrels. Well, hopefully you've learned from this. <laughs> you can do it again. Unfortunately, they don't seem to make those type of associations. <laughs> Lovely. Have a nice rest of your day. Bye, gorgeous girl. That's a good girl. That's better. Are you comfortable? Although Lola was quite nervous, with a little bit of soothing talk, she's managed to get through the ordeal. Coming in. Good boy. That's it. Sit down. <laughs> it's all right, Lucy. When we're outside, we'll have a cigarette. <laughs> Come. Good girl. Turn around. She's a good girl. Oh. <laughs> if Finn was a celebrity, he would probably be John Bon Jovi. His hair kind of goes with the 80s glam. A sort of an Emma Thompson. Really good fun, but then I think there is that underlying sensible side, really. She's quiet, like, look at me, ain't she, but don't touch, so... Who's a bit like that? Beyonce? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he reminds me of um, Baloo the Bear, out of Jungle Book. Bubbly. Bruce Forsyth, probably. <laughs> Before he gave up tap dancing. <laughs> oh, Lucy, did you hear what he said? Right, let's um, start. You are cross. Oh, come on, you. We're trying to help you. Clive and the team are getting ready to operate on Dio, the rhinoceros iguana. She has a 10 centimetre stone in her bladder, and if it's not removed, she'll die. You're a bit sleepy now, but not sleepy enough to... Hello. I think if she wasn't sleepy, she'd have had you by now. All right. <gasps> Let's have you up here. Oh, sweetie. Go sleepy, guys. 
And when you wake up, your bladder won't hurt anymore. Good shot. How are we doing? We've got a couple of mils in now. Mm. Mm, still glaring still, at us. Yeah, moving her eyes around. Oh, all right, okay. Mrs. Okay, she says, don't you try relaxing your grip on my head. I'll have you. Right, so we've got we've got a few mils in. I'm hoping that's going to be enough to intubate. She's not reacting when I'm pinching her toes. Oxygen's on. We're ready to go. Clive inserts a tube to assist Dio's breathing while she's under anaesthetic. Okay. Oh, that's quite useful. The rhino horn allows <laughs> yeah. us to tie her, because that normally slides off for me. Okay. She's taking breath now, yep. Okay, right. I'm going to take her. Pretty easy to see where the stone is. But although the stone is obvious, it's still going to be precision work. So I'm going to make my stab incision there, mm -hmm. so I can work out where the blood vessels are, and hopefully make my incision up to about there. Right, I'm going to start now. I'm just going cautiously here so that I can see where the blood vessels are. Clive needs to be careful to avoid the major blood vessels so that Dio doesn't bleed to death. But it's not easy. Can I ask you to hold that out the way there for me? So, unfortunately, that is bleeding from our abdominal vein. Can I get some thinner suture, please? Mm -hmm. Some four nord micron. Right, so, <clears throat> unfortunately, we've nicked a, a blood vessel, so... We just have to tie this blood vessel off before we can carry on. It's a bit of a pain. I didn't really want to do that. But it hasn't lost any significant amount of blood. It's just slowed us down a bit. OK. With the blood vessel tied off, Clive gets to the job in hand. So we have to be careful we don't make the hole too big, because then we won't be able to close it. There's the stone. Although Clive has got the stone out of the bladder, he wants to be sure there are no fragments left behind. OK, we've got to try and get all this out, so we're going to need to flush. It's lots of little bits and pieces, which is a bit of a pain. It smells great. I am not eating cereal or porridge for a while. How do you make your porridge? You know, it looks like that initially. How do you make porridge? It never looks like that. What, when you've just put the oats in the milk and water and it's not cooked yet? You can't cook them with milk, you just cook them with water. I use half and half. And there's your problem. I wonder how much she weighs now. Well, that must weigh... A couple of hundred grams? 150 grams. You're you going for 200? I'll go 200, you go 150. Okay. Use it by lunch. With the stone removed, Clive wants to flush the bladder to make sure liquid is passing freely through the body. Bladder is shrinking back to a normal size already, isn't it? Okay, you. Come on. Yeah, I can Oh, hi, Lucy. Hi. <laughs> Hello. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's Peyton. <laughs> right, so you both stuck your finger in from different entrances to find there's no stone in the middle. Yeah, yeah. Pink, pinky swore. Great. With the operation a success, all that remains is That's to good. stitch up Dio. Would you like tea? Oh. Oh my god, that's like the universal I'm signal for do you want tea? I thought you were trying to say make me tea. No! Oh. Do you want tea? Like if someone's talking on the phone, you could go. I hear there's some babies out here. Need to see. A fluffy family have just arrived, and they're causing quite a stir with the staff. Hello, Mama. Two and a half week old kittens, Bear and Winter, are here for routine flea treatment with their owners, 13 year old Sarah and her dad, Sean. This one's Bear. 
He just looks a bit like a black bear, so, and he's very fluffy. So we called him Bear. This is Autumn. She's one. She's the mother of the kittens, very protective over them. She's always aware of what's happening. This is Winter, because the mother's called Autumn, so we thought Winter, because he's a little bit white. Autumn's kittens. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so these guys are here for um, flea treatment, is that right? Yeah. yeah. Hi, guys. We didn't know whether we could do the mum as well. Get her coated as well, yeah, it's fine. What's our weight like? Yeah, we're all right. Because two have died. OK. We found out the mother was pregnant, uh, and then when she had them, there were four, but then two of them passed away. So they were just a bit too small, and obviously the mother's quite young, so they just didn't survive. Sarah has been looking after cats for the last four years, and for her, the pets have a very special significance. My wife passed away, so she agreed that Sarah here could have cats for her birthday. So that's how I ended up with the cats. We always had dogs before. Now that there's no one at home, the cats are easier to manage. I'll go and grab the spray and put some gloves on and we'll get working for them, all right? But their mother, Autumn, has had a hard start in life. We've had the mother now about nine months. We were going to get her neutered, but she was hit with a car. So we brought her to the vets and she recovered, but we couldn't get her done. So by the time we decided to have her done, it was too late. So hence the kittens. <laughs> if she didn't get hit by a car, these kittens wouldn't be here. Treating such cute kittens is a perk of the job. I need spray kittens. Do you want to help spray oh, kittens? Oh, I might like to help. <laughs> and Faye doesn't need asking twice to lend a hand. Rub it all over. Oh, Bobby, oh. what are we doing? And it's cold as well, isn't it? Rub on to me. It smells funny now. Rub on to me, ma. Fleas aren't just a nuisance for the animals. They do make them itch, and they can lose their fur and have sores everywhere. But at the other end of the scale, it can also cause death if it's that bad an infestation, especially on the little ones. Did you hiss at me? I think you did. Who is? Little one. <laughs> oh. Oh. Hello, Mummy. Make you feel more comfy. Not so itchy, yeah. scratchy, hey? Mm -hmm. They're gorgeous. All kittens are gorgeous. And they were beautiful. These are cute. They're all so cute. For me personally, cats are very important in my life. I have three. And to this particular family, cats meant an awful lot to them. Any problems with just give us a buzz, we can talk you over yeah, it no, through it on the phone. As well. We agreed to keep one and give the others away, but now they're, they don't want to give any away. Because there's only two. <laughs> so we'll see. Yeah, right, Dad. Thanks very much. All right, no okay. They're staying. Good names as well, I like their names. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Yeah, bye. Dio the iguana is starting to come round from the surgery she had to remove a huge stone from her bladder. At around 150 grams, Clive was right about the weight. Now he needs to let Dio's owner know how the operation went. Oh, hi, Mr. Wright. It's Clive here from Montgomery Vets. Everything's gone fine. We've finished the operation. Um, and um, Dio is just um, slowly waking up. I'm very happy with how the procedure went. The stone, even though I knew the size of it, I can't believe how big that was for me. When we, when we got out. There's, a, there's a quite a big wound that we had to make to get that out. Otherwise, yeah, we get her up and get her moving around. Lovely, okay, that's great. Okay, okay, speak to you later, bye-bye. That was definitely one of the more unusual operations I've done. It was great feeling, you know, to know that we've, we've saved that animal's life is great.
Dio made an excellent recovery from her operation, and much to her owner's relief, there have been no more stones since. She's happy at home, where she's very much the queen of the castle. If we had left it any longer, maybe in a period of two weeks, she wouldn't be with us anymore. Um, which would be heartbreaking, because we've had her since uh, basically a hatchling. Casper the guinea pig continues to have problems with his teeth, and has already been back to have them filed down in surgery again. And Sarah persuaded her dad to keep both bear and winter. The kittens are growing quickly and causing chaos wherever they go.